Ahead of the Global Education Summit, to be hosted by the United Kingdom, Kenya, and the Global Partnership for Education next month in London, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson sent his special envoy for girls' education, Helen Grant, to Ghana and Sierra Leone. She spent time assessing education for girls, as well as gender and inclusion projects. The UK has a global target of getting 40 million more girls in school by 2026, as well as 20 million more girls reading by the age of 10 in low- and middle-income countries. We're joined now by Helen Grant to talk about just how transformative education can be in tackling poverty, among other issues, in addition to being the British Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Girls' Education. She works for the Foreign Office. Welcome to The Morning Show, Ms. Helen. It's good to have you good on The Morning good Show. Good morning to you. It, it, it's, it's lovely to be speaking to you from London. All right. I was in Nigeria just a few weeks ago, and uh, I, I'm missing it already. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, for the benefit of our viewers, what is the Global Education Summit and why is it so important? I know you're partnering with Ghana and Sierra Leone in furthering girl-child education in West Africa. Do you speak more on that partnership and are there any plans to include Nigeria? Well, the, the Global uh, Education Summit is, is a, a very uh, important uh, summit. There are many enablers uh, to girls and, and, and boys uh, getting a, a good education and having the finances to, to support our children is one of them. So I'm extremely proud uh, that we are co-hosting uh, with Tech Kenya this important summit that will take place on the 28th uh, and 29th of, of July uh, in, in London. Uh, the Global Partnership for Education is, is a, a unique agency. It specialises uh, entirely uh, on education. Uh, the UK was one of the founding uh, members and we have been one of the biggest donors. Uh, and we are currently working extremely hard uh, with uh, our international uh, partners to, to raise at least five billion dollars uh, for children's education over the next five years and that that's called the replenishment and we are hopeful uh, that if that sum or more uh, it is uh, is achieved then that will help to ensure uh, the, the education or improvements to education for 175 uh, million uh, young people including uh, many young people in West Africa, including uh, people in uh, Nigeria, hopefully. Uh, and it will also longer term uh, add billions potentially to the economies of developing nations and lift many millions uh, of uh, people out of poverty. So it's a very important summit. I'm hoping uh, that um, uh, there will be representation uh, at the summit uh, from uh, the, the Nigerian uh, government. Um, and it will be, you know, a, a really, really important uh, event. We've, we've already had a number of pledges uh, in from uh, countries, in, in, including Finland and the Netherlands and, and Italy. Uh, and I know that many more pledges will, will uh, come in the, in the next few weeks. Right. Uh, good to see you, uh, Helen Grant, uh, <laughs> once again. And uh, I'm really excited you're talking about girl, girl child education and education in general in this uh, part of the world. I mean, wh what can the UK government do to help Nigeria? I mean, you, uh, I know you don't want it to be given up, but you have, you've got Nigerian blood in you yourself, and you, you know the terrain, you know what happens around here. You know the things like the child right uh, law has not been domesticated in most states in the country, and you know the challenges of Nigeria, like I said, because you have Nigerian blood in you. I mean, what can the UK, and what you know, advocacy can you help us do you know, as regards this partnership, you know, and we're saying, okay, speaking as, as, as somebody that's got Nigeria blood, that, that knows the challenges, you know, speaking as somebody that can tie in ECOWAS into the conversation, speaking as somebody that can tie in with our volunteer force into the conversation here. Well, I think that's a, re a really good uh, point to make. And, and you're right, I, I'm extremely uh, proud of, of my British heritage and uh, my uh, Nigerian heritage. My my father is Nigerian. My mother is English. Our, our family name uh, is Okuboye, um, and um, I I always get excited when when I I come to visit uh, Nigeria and care deeply uh, about 
uh, the country and, and especially about the education of children and especially about the education of, uh, of girls. And, and I can tell you, you know, the, the UK has a special relationship with Nigeria. It has done uh, for a long, long time now. And over the past decade, uh, we've supported uh, over 8 uh, million children to, to receive uh, a, an improved education. Uh, in, uh, I believe, 11 states, um, and that work is uh, continuing. Uh, our support for Nigeria has taken the form, Nigerian children's education, I should say, has taken the form of teacher training, um, uh, supporting children into primary and secondary school, boosting education uh, management uh, systems, and when I was in Nigeria uh, just a few weeks ago, I was able to see uh, some very good programs that focus on improved learning uh, for, for, for girls, but also seek to address the issues that can keep um, our, our, young, our young ladies uh, out of school. Issues like you know, pregnancy, period poverty, uh, violence in and out of school. And these programs are funded by UK Aid. Uh, and of course, working very closely with our partners are, are making a, a huge difference. I think it's right to say as, as well that um, the, the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has had a devastating uh, impact on, on global education, not, not just in Nigeria, but it has certainly impacted uh, in Nigeria. Uh, we believe that at peak globally it disrupted uh, the learning of one6 uh, billion uh, children. Uh, so from Lagos to, to, to London, our, our children uh, were out of school. And of course, we need to step it up and we really need to address that. Many of these uh, children are girls. Uh, many of them will never return to school uh, or, or even start school, lowering their chances of, of decent livelihoods. And, you know, we all know, too, that out of school girls are, uh, uh, are especially at risk of violence, uh, sexual violence, pregnancy, early marriage, forced marriage, um, FGM, um, and you know various other problems as well, inc including uh, people trafficking. So we've got to work very hard, and we've got to work together uh, to make sure that we do not have a lost generation uh, of girls on our hand, and that is what the UK government. Uh, is seeking to do. Yes, and I did hear you mention that you were, um, you know, trying to raise about uh, five billion dollars to facilitate uh, this move. I mean, how do you intend to do that? And I know that it's a huge um, goal that you guys are setting out. You guys are saying that you would, um, you know, you're targeting about 40 million girls and, you know, uh, and all of that. I just want to know how you guys are going to uh, get that uh, funding. Well, well, my, my Prime Minister Boris Johnson's mission is that every girl, every single girl on, on the planet receives 12 uh, years of uh, quality education. And, uh, you know, he believes and I believe that that is one of the best ways of tackling many uh, of the big issues facing uh, the world today. You know, girls' education is an absolute game changer. If we want to uh, change the world for the better, girls' education is, is a very, very um, Im important place uh, to start. And, and yes, you know, we, 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 are, we are pushing even, in, even further. Um, the, our Foreign Secretary, uh, Dominic Raab, uh, uh, has agreed uh, a global target of, of getting 40 million uh, more uh, girls in primary and secondary school uh, by 2026 in low to middle income countries and getting 20 million uh, more uh, girls uh, reading by the age of 10. And of course, we need the money to, to make this happen. So I make no apology whatsoever for the fact that there is a big uh, $5 billion target and we may well need uh, more than that to, to move uh, the dial on. But we uh, believe it's a very good uh, place to start. Um, and, you know, we are reaching out to nations all over the world. Many have already made their pledges. Uh, the, there have been pledges in from Finland and the Netherlands uh, and, and Italy, uh, and I'm sure more uh, will come in uh, as, as we approach 
the, the G7 uh, Leaders Summit, which will start off um, in, in Cornwall, uh, a beautiful part of England, uh, to, tomorrow and, and continue through the weekend. So, so uh, viewers of Arise, but do watch, uh, do watch the space. There will be some very, very important announcements made uh, for girls' education, uh, both political and financial. Right. And speaking of Cornwall, goodness me, I just remember Cornish uh, cheese, <laughs> but it's all right. It's fine. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the UK continent's aid budget, and that has caused a big brouhaha. And people down here are asking <coughs> that, is that going to affect in any way what the UK intends to do in terms of, you know, uh, putting some funds, the development of education and the likes and some other sectors, you know, that aid budget cut, it's caused a big brouhaha. They're reducing that much from about 0.7 percent, you know, of the uh, Br British uh, GDP to the numbers as it is now. So, hope that is not going to affect anything. Well, the the, the seismic uh, impact of uh, the pandemic has meant that, uh, sadly, we have needed to make a temporary cut uh, to our aid budget from 0.7 uh, percent. Uh, going down, again, I repeat, on a temporary basis to 0.5. Uh, we hope that it will return to 0.7 when fiscal uh, conditions uh, allow. But we've got to remember, too, that we still have one of the largest aid budgets in the world. And this year, uh, we will be spending something in, in the region of, of £10 billion uh, pounds, uh, on overseas uh, development and it's also uh, important to uh, just flag on this that girls education remains a real priority uh, it is something that's very close to uh, the prime minister's heart and indeed a key target area uh, for um, our uh, prime minister uh, and again i i would also just like to uh, remark on this and we, we must remember that it's not just the money. Money, of, of course, is, is, is part of, of, of the plan. But it's also about all of us raising our game and rallying other nations around uh, the world uh, to embrace these important targets, these global targets uh, that have been set. I repeat again, of getting 40 million more girls into primary and secondary school, uh, getting 20 million uh, uh, more girls uh, re reading um, and these are global targets and they do require a global solution so we all need to work hard uh, together uh, to actually uh, achieve this and, and to move the dial and, and to make a difference. All right well before we let you go what can we expect from the G7 uh, leaders uh, summit uh, tomorrow? Well as I said earlier, you need to watch that space. I, I think it's going to be uh, a very uh, special uh, summit. We've got to remember that this is the first time uh, that the, these leaders have come together uh, in person uh, in, in nearly two years. Uh, I would say watch that space for some very special uh, announcements coming out to do with girls' education, uh, political uh, and financial and I also think there could be some uh, major progress made and some major announcements um, uh, delivered on other issues uh, too, like, like, like climate um, and, and, and vaccines. So it's a big opportunity for these important leaders to work together, to collaborate um, and to plan how we build back better uh, from COVID-19. Um, and, and drive the, the, the movement on to building a greener, fairer, uh, and more prosperous world. Right. I, I mean, I'm really, <coughs> I'm really excited when you said watch that space, because the last uh, uh, G7 for all of this that happened in Biarritz in Spain, you know, some a big announcement were made as regards, you know, empowering women out there with, uh, I, I think Angela Kijo worked so hard on that with her Batonga Foundation, and they got some good funding for women in, in business and the like. So I'm really, really optimistic about, about this. Uh, but we cannot get anything done without a culture change. A lot of people still think a woman's place is in the kitchen or the other room. They don't think women should go to school. 
how do we talk about the culture you know, that is constantly putting women down in Africa and other parts of the world, the culture that doesn't believe in the emancipation of women? Well, I, I, I think that's an imp important point and, you know, raising awareness and, and um, you know, covering issues as you are this morning, as Arise are this morning, talking about the, the benefits of, of, of girls and ed education is, is critically important. You know, ed girls' education is not just important for women and girls who make up 51% uh, of the population, but it has a transformational impact. You know, we know that a child of a mother who can read is 50% more likely to live beyond the age of five, twice as likely to go to school uh, themselves, and 50% more likely to be immunised. So girls' education is you know, not just vital for, for women and girls, but also in levelling up society, boosting incomes and, and developing economies and nations. And these are the messages that we need to get out, that leaders uh, need to get out to um, parents, families and all others as, as well as to what a difference uh, uh, education are, educating our girls. Well, thank you very much, Helen. It was a pleasure to have you on the programme today.